Hey, and welcome back to Rhinoceros and Grasshopper Tutorials, Complex 3D Modeling with your host, Saki Baziz. So in the last introduction video, I was showing you all the different elements and we stopped at our viewports and I was basically just telling you or showing you that these different viewports always show the same scene, just from different angles, views or construction planes, basically. And what we have here is our perspective, so our three-dimensional uh, viewport where we can actually hover and fly through our um, and look at our object in a three-dimensional context. And the other three viewports are actually just going to be a planar representation, if you want. So this is going to be our top planar representation of our object, and it's uh, perfectly aligned to our dimensions, our um, axis which is going to be a theme of our next uh, tutorial. And of course, we have the same for the front and the right, and you can always just change those, those settings. So you could just say, for instance, if you press on this drop-down menu, variety of different options. It's going to be our display options, how the object is actually displayed in Rhino. And of course, we can go to set view, which is another set of commands that you can access, and just change basically our current one with another perspective. So now we have the back. And another way to do that is instead of using the drop down, you can just go there and just highlight whichever viewport you want to change. And in this folder structure up here, you have always a cluster of, of options targeted at one group. So for instance, I want to set the view, right? And set view is a whole folder here. And it has implemented all the different commands that I can access which um, have an influence on my view. So right here, I could use these little car symbols to actually change my views just by clicking through them. And I was in the front, um, or basically I was in the right, and I could go to left, I could do perspective, this one as well, and I can just like this easily set whatever I want. But that will again be another topic, so don't worry if you don't follow along right now. And let's just bring up back our um, quick tour. So just press F1. If you missed the last tutorial, go to quick tour. And we will now just enter our quick tour here. And just make sure you go down to the quick tour, just open up the drop down, and then you go to the Rhino window option. And here McNeil gives us actually a precise uh, illustration and annotated, annotated all the different elements that are in your viewport and you can access, right? So we looked at the first three ones and we looked at position number five, our viewports, and we understand a little bit better, okay, I have a three-dimensional representation, which is the perspective and the different, uh, more planar views, let's say. And we looked at this little drop-down icon um, here and know that we can access in position number 11, the viewport title, basically, and there's a drop-down a menu with another family of commands that you can access. But again, in Rhino, you have several ways to actually get to one goal. And my attempt here is to basically show you some of them. And we will now just continue with our viewports. And I just want to show you one more thing to the viewports, and then we will dive into the icons here. They're basically our commands and how we can access them. So if I go back and I minimize this one, you can see down here, you have these little check boxes and you can just basically, if you select them, you can go to one of them, basically. If I want to go to perspective, I can just click down here and I am inside my perspective. The perspective is highlighted with a color now and it tells me, okay, the viewport that I'm in is going to be my perspective. Now, one thing I want to show you quickly is going to be also that you can just go inside one perspective in a full uh, window, so full size window, by just double clicking on this title. If you double click it, you're going to be in this uh, window, which is basically the full size of your interface for your window uh, properties here. And you can now just stay inside here. If you want to model like in three dimensional space, you don't need the other ones, you can just stay here. If you want to go back, just make sure to double click it and you'll go back to your four viewport settings. And this is uh, applicable to all the different uh, viewports that you have opened up here in Rhino. Just double click, double click, always. And in if you're inside uh, one of them, 
in a full size and you don't want to you know go back to the overview and then uh, access another one you can just by this little folder tabs here just click through them so you just avoid uh, one extra step i would say just by using this little built-in function and you can see a little plus sign which will allow you to actually set new viewports and actually set uh, layouts but that will again be a whole other topic for next tutorial so i won't dive into that just one last thing i want to show you actually or tell you is that you can always access your current uh, that you can understand which what are your dimensions of your window right now so let's say you want to know exactly what are my uh, dimensions here what is the width and height of my current view and you can see that in your viewport settings so if you have properties here you can see that in this one you have your viewport which is basically telling you okay title right now you're in the perspective view and your width is going to be a certain number right now it's going to be 1438 and my height is going to be right now 794 and that really just depends on how you stretch and modify your viewport so I could just um, open just make it you know bigger in the width and it will show me the number then according to my changes basically this is quite dynamic uh, so you can change it but like i said it's going to be a topic of its own so uh, don't get worried we will t uh, toggle that on its own and what i did here i just used in standards this icon which just allows you to with the right mouse button uh, go to the default viewport settings and just basically zooms to that object for all of the f uh, four viewports which is sometimes very handy. Okay, so let's continue on. Now we go back to our our quick tour here. And now we want to look at basically our little icons up here. So the first thing I want to show you is going to be number four, position number four. And um, this is basically our toolbar, our main quick toolbar, let's say. And it contains graphical icons for initiating commands okay that is a little bit abstract um, I agree but what does that mean now for instance if I take this box and I delete it and I go back to my little icon here with the few uh, viewports and click with my right mouse button I should access back the default settings the default view and now you can see in this quick toolbar here I have several graphical icons that are more or less a cluster of little commands that belong to that overlaying icon so for instance um, the box that we created has its own icon it's illustrated with the box and if i press on it it's going to be a simple box command right and i can do the same thing i could now build up a box if i would want to but i don't want to do it now so i just press escape and notice that at every icon or most of those icons have a little a triangle which shows you here and if you hover over it it will tell you um, cascade solid creation yeah and if I press on that I get a new window which pops up and I can basically drag and drop this window up into my canvas as you can see just make sure that you are not um, on the annotated side so you're not actually moving the solid creation but you go to this blue highlighted window and then you can actually um, just move it wherever you want to and the, all of these commands are hidden inside this box um, feature and again those come with a different set of options that you can apply to so my um, box has some different ways that I can construct it actually or my sphere could be constructed in a different way but these are basically my solids my solid objects and we will cover that in the next tutorial but just showing you how you could access those and in Rhino you have actually four main methods to actually access that we have already seen two so number one was just by typing in the command if you know it just that is the fastest way and you can um, again make it more efficient using shortcuts which again will be a topic and this is just the way the best way I would say to work in Rhino is just by typing it in uh, if you are getting more and more used to Rhino, you know the shortcuts, you know the uh, commands, and you can just like um, be really fast with that. But if you don't know it, you can also 
the first thing you could then do is use this quick toolbar because it has everything more or less built into these little clusters. And um, let's look at our quick tour again. And just want to show you that this is basically our quick toolbar, right? And you have always these icons here and the icons up top. But the uh, icons up top here, on the top here, they go on the horizontal um, view, are actually related to another kind of logic to access commands. And this is um, set here as, let's look at the position, should be number 10. So let's look what number 10 is. It's our toolbar groups, uh, a collection of tapped toolbars. Okay, so what that means is actually quite nice <laughs> as well. So instead of only having the option to access commands with this toolbar, um, Rhino brings in this folder structure up here. Like I already said, it has this function that you have one, like let's say theme, and a theme could be like our solids, right? So we just looked at our solids and the standard, we went to box, we made this drop down menu, we dragged it into our canvas, and these are our options for uh, commands that generate solid objects. But we could also go up here in our um, grouped toolbar um, and just go to solid tools, open up this folder. And this is a theme and it holds inside it all, or let's say most of the commands that are related to solid objects, uh, which is quite nice because it has a little bit more, as you, uh, as you can see, than our solid creation taken from the quick toolbar. So it has some more deformable uh, commands, you can just apply some modifications to it and um, alter objects uh, with different icons here, which are maybe not implemented in our quick toolbar here. And also you have, of course, on the side, um, you always get a new set of commands. So if you look at the standard one, this was our quick toolbar in the standard. And if I go to the solid one, this quick toolbar changes accordingly. So in the quick toolbar, it is now only more or less implementing all the solid tools. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be our third way to access the commands. And now let's look at the uh, final way, which is going to be, again, to sneak peek in our quick tour. So the quick tour is going to be, the last one is going to be our position number eight. And this is basically the menu, the main menu that Grasshopper has. And it is grouped by Rhino commands and by functions. Now, let's look at that again. So I just showed you our folder structure up here, which is the grouped cluster, let's say. And there's little this little icon here, as you might see, is the options icon. And if you click on it, you get a new window with new features, and you can just, um, you know, extend your folder structure. But I just wanted to show it to you, and you can just go to properties and then just, you know, change some um, features to it. You can also add and remove objects from a folder, so that's quite handy. But like I said, that's another um, topic because it's going to maybe go too uh, far in depth. But the fourth way is actually to go up here in our main menu and then look at our options. And this time it's clustered just in a few main topics which is going to be like view, it's going to be curves, surfaces, solids, meshes. So these four are actually the objects and how we can um, generate them. So we have um, four main families, which are the curves that we can generate, the NURBS curve, uh, which make up the logic of Rhino. We have the surfaces that we can make from those curves or generate by uh, using surface commands. Then we have solids, which are like um, closed objects, let's say, volumes, if you want. We have meshes, a different set of geometry. And then we go to some different, basically, groups. It's going to be like dimensions. So if you like are doing layouts and you are doing architectural plans or any other sorts of plans and you want to annotate your drawings with some dimensions and some basic informations, this one would be the way to use that. And then we have a transform group, which is basically allowing you to transform any of those objects that you generated, like let's say curve, surfaces, solids. You can then go to transform and then do complex modifications, let's say, to them. 
and just explore the whole variety of Rhino and their commands and that's uh, basically why Rhino is maybe that amazing because it allows you to do a lot of complex modifications in a rather fast and simple way and you can maybe understand it and maybe even control it precisely that's something very handy in Rhino and then you have of course some other ones that are maybe not going to jump in right now so you have tools you have analysis so you can analyze your geometry but the next two ones are quite interesting. It's basically render options. And um, I will maybe make a whole series of how you can make renderings with Rhino, uh, which is quite brilliant. In Rhino 6, I have to say, it's getting really, really, uh, has made a big jump. And then you have panels. So let's assume that you don't have this set here. So if I would just take this away and I just delete it, maybe this is something that is happening to you right now and you're just wondering how can I bring this menu points up that he was showing me. You can do that by using these panels here. And right now you can see that because I've deleted it, uh, my windows, my reports just adjusted accordingly because I have more space. And so this is something you could understand that you can just you know make your window bigger by this way. And if you want to bring it back, you just go to panels and just activate all the things that you want. For now, let's say I want to bring back my layers. So I want to know, okay, uh, what I, what am I working with? And as a default, it might contain some other options that you also set. And now it's just a floating window, right? And that's maybe not what you want. So you can just go to the side. And at some point, this should happen. That as soon as you go to a certain uh, level, it will highlight a region in a specific color in this case some bluish color and if you let go it will just auto snap to that position so it will allow you to just auto snap to that and now it's not floating anymore which is um, also handy but if you like if you prefer the floating method just go for that one okay I'm gonna end it now and then I'm gonna make one last one it's gonna be part three and then I'm just gonna show you all the different features but already by now you should have a much better understanding of this interface and maybe lose a little bit of the fear of what is actually going on and me feel a little bit more confident to be in this environment and hopefully um, just watch on all the videos and if you like this video please make sure to subscribe to my channel because more content is coming up for you and I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.